I'm Drew Jaynes. I'm a core committer for WordPress. Um, up until recently, I was pretty much focused on working on documentation in WordPress core. Um, but the last sort of six months, I've been trumpeting the horn of getting people to beta test WordPress. So um, trying out WordPress t uh, tomorrow's WordPress today, that's essentially beta testing WordPress. How, how many of you in here have ever beta tested WordPress? Nice. And how many in here have no idea what beta testing is? <laughs> beta testing is essentially being able to try before you buy, right? Um, and in talking to people at work camps and meetups and on the forums and on social media and other places the last couple months, uh, I've noticed that there have been a lot of people who th seem to think that they have no say in what's happening in WordPress. We're iterating faster and faster, targeting three major releases a year, and people are starting to get overwhelmed and feel like they can't keep up. Well, beta testing actually will help you do that, and it'll actually also help you have a say in what's coming in WordPress. And that's because you're ideal beta testers. You're ideal because all of you use WordPress every day. Use it for your businesses, for your personal blogs. Uh, and when something changes in WordPress, you're, you have unique insight into how it works and you know what's new, right? You, you can say, oh, well, this is different. Maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll find a, a bug here and I'll report it. So the hope really is in getting all of you to do some beta testing is to feel empowered to be a part of making WordPress better, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about what beta testing is. The sort of dry definition of that is the second phase of software testing in which a sampling of the intended audience tries the product out. In the scope of a WordPress, a WordPress release, um, let's talk a little bit about the, the um, development process of a WordPress release. We typically have an alpha stage, a beta stage, and a release candidate stage, followed by the release. And you, a minute ago I mentioned that we're now targeting three major releases a year. That means a standard release at this point is about three and a half months long with a little bit of a break in between. Um, but the upside of that, C, is that we get basically six weeks of development in the alpha stage. And that's pretty much working on feature plugins, work, working on any kind of bug fixing or new enhancements that are going in. And then we hit the beta stage, which is, eh, I think, four to six weeks long. And we have anywhere from one to five beta stages in the beta stage. And then we hit RC, which is two to three weeks long, and we have one to three RCs. Um, release candidates, that is, before we get to the release stage. So expanding on the beta stage, uh, that's essentially, once we hit beta, that's the point where all of the feature plugins that we've been working on for the current release have been merged in. Um, it's also the point where um, enhancements are frozen. We're essentially saying no more enhancements beyond this point. And then we start to test and iterate and get feedback from beta testers on sort of, you know, did this break your site or did this break your theme or whatever. So how do you get started beta testing? Well, there's essentially three things, right, that are integral to that. The first is getting set up beta testing, then finding out what to test, and finally where to report your feedback if you find something, right? So. I've essentially identified maybe three good solutions for how to get set up um, beta testing WordPress. The first is to use your existing site, plus the beta tester plugin, which is in the WordPress.org repository. Now, some pros of this are that you can use your existing site. You could use your existing production site, install a plugin, and try it out, right? Uh, you can test it against your themes and your own plugins. You get nightly updates every, every night sort of, it's known as the bleeding edge, right, of WordPress development. And you get access to what's known as the beta testing tab in the plugins installer. Um, and the plugins that are in the beta testing tab are actually all of the um, feature plugins that are currently in development. So 
Uh, interestingly, you'll see some plugins in there for things that are in the, cur the current beta and other things that are going to be shipped in the next version of WordPress or are, are up for consideration in the next version of WordPress. And that WordPress beta tester plugin is in the repository. You can install it from the dashboard. Of course, the cons, uh, kind of in, in the case of your existing site, the cons kind of outweigh the pros. And that, the first is that there's not really a good rollback procedure, right? You would want to back up your database before you install this plugin, because it's going to upgrade your database to a development version of WordPress. Um, and for any of you who have ever upgraded WordPress and wished you hadn't, you know that you have to sort of manually roll it back. Um, so if you're going to use it on a production site, which I would actually recommend you don't, um, make a backup of your site first. The second option is to create a dev site and then use the beta tester plugin. And for that, you kind of have two pretty good options, right? You could, if you have an existing WordPress site on a server somewhere, you could create another WordPress site alongside it, run the beta tester plugin, and then install your plugins or themes or whatever, and then you can test those things against the beta, right? Um, it's still the bleeding edge because you're using the beta tester plugin. Um, and you still get access to the beta testing tab, which gives you all of the feature plugins we just talked about. Um, another option is that you can actually use desktop server. I was talking to Sarah Pressler last night about this. Um, you can use desktop server to set up a dev site on your local host, on your computer, Mac or PC, or I think even Linux. Um, and they, they have like a free version of, of desktop server you can use, and then you can just install the beta tester plugin. You can run it on your uh, local machine. And of course, the cool part about that is that you can break it and it doesn't matter because it's a development site. Um, again, this would go back to the cons on the setting up um, using your existing site. You can break it and it doesn't matter. Um, and there's actually a guide in the core contributor handbook on uh, the core P2 on make.wordpress.org slash core. Um, there's actually a guide in there on how to install desktop server on Mac and PC that we wrote a couple years ago, so, and it's still totally up to date. Um, but obviously the, there is a little bit of a higher barrier to entry to using a development site. You have to set up a separate site and install the plugin. The third option is actually a little side project that I've been working on with a couple of other core developers, and that's called trywpbeta.com. It basically removes the barrier. <laughs> There's no barrier. You can visit the site and, and test beta. You can log into the admin, root around, do whatever you want in there, and it just like resets at the end of the day. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> and we'll get to that in a minute. But you still get access to all the future plugins uh, via the beta testing tab. And it's actually updated hourly. Uh, and the site's actually live right now, as of a couple hours ago. Try WP, trywpbeta.com. It's running the 2016 theme and a bunch of Phil Murray. Anybody in here know what Phil Murray is? <laughs> it's a Bill Murray filler images service. It's running, <laughs> it's running a bunch of Phil Murray's images. Um, and you actually might notice up there in the top right corner, there's a WCPDX link. I created a subsite for WCPDX. If you guys want to test out beta, 4.4 beta, like right after this talk, um, wcpdx.trywpbeta.com, and then there's credentials right here. And you know, it's worth mentioning that we just shipped 4.4 beta 1 two days ago, so excellent timing. <coughs> Um, some cons for the TriWP beta site, obviously, is that you can't really test it against your themes and plugins. It's pretty locked down because we don't want somebody to hack the site. <laughs> um, and it's, it's very much in a vanilla state. There's some demo content on there with uh, O-embeds and some other things, but it's, you know, it's pretty vanilla. It will give you an opportunity to try out some of the new admin things that have been added and um, test 2016 if you don't want to run it on a local site or on a, your production site. And 
The upside, by the way, of doing that is that um, you can test out the theme and then um, submit any PRs or, or issues you find on GitHub because they're doing development for 2016 on GitHub now. So let's talk about where to find out what to test. Well, there's actually a couple of good places. When we're in these testing stages, that is to say beta and RC, we actually post, every time we release a new beta or a new RC, we actually post on the wordpress.org news blog. And it has a listing out of like all of the things that we've worked on since the last time we iterated. Um, you know, number of bugs fixed, number of contributors, all those sorts of things. But it's actually a really great place to find out what's changed since the last beta, especially if you're actively beta testing WordPress. Another one is, if you're feeling a little technical, is to go to the, um, the development blog for the core development blog at make.wordpress.org slash core. It's definitely a little more technical. There's, a, um, there's this great guy, Morgan Estes, who's one of my coworkers, actually, who's um, working on this sort of weekly post called WordPress Core Weekly, and it's basically a change log. It's an it's a easy to read development change log of what's happened in the last week in Core, and that's especially helpful during the testing stages. Um, you can also check out the feature plugins list, which is linked from the Core development blog. That's the list, that's essentially all the plugins that are in the beta testing tab, but it has sort of a table of status of where the feature plugins are, so you can sort of figure out which ones are being considered for the next release. And finally, go to WP Tavern or, or Post Status. They do roundups as we get closer and closer to the end of the release with what's coming up. And that's a great way to find out sort of maybe the more controversial changes that are coming in the next version and try it out for yourself. So let's say you got everything set up and then you found something. What do you do with that, right? Well, you have a couple options. Sort of the first, the first option we'd prefer people to use is the alpha beta forum in the WordPress.org support forums. Um, just log in with your WordPress.org username and create a new topic with whatever it is you found, right? If you're feeling adventurous, you could go to the core track. It's a little more technical and there's a little bit of a barrier to entry in terms of figuring out how to use track. Um, and something I actually left off here is 2016. If you find something in 2016, you'd want to go to the um, GitHub repo for that, which is in the WordPress organization. So it's like github.com slash WordPress slash 2016. And finally, um, I think it would be totally fine for people to write about things that they find in WordPress on their own blogs or on social media. I think, honestly, just getting more people talking about what's happening in WordPress or what's coming up in WordPress uh, will be beneficial. I think our beta testing numbers have sort of dropped off the last couple of years, and as we're iterating faster and faster, it would be nice to see more and more people getting involved in that. So I thought it might be kind of fun to actually test some stuff. Has anybody here actually tested beta yet? Who in here didn't even know that beta shipped like two days ago? <laughs> uh, so I think what I'm going to do is go upstairs <laughs> and keep talking on this mic so that I can do this demo on my computer, which is on the balcony. Yeah, yeah, right. All right. So we have sort of an endless list of things we could test, really. But I thought these are sort of the headline features. We can't really test the REST API without some kind of something hooking into the REST API, but um, we've actually made, you know, 2016 is the new default theme. 
And that's, of course, running on trywpbeta.com try right now. Um, and then the, the embed a WordPress post in a WordPress post is a popular one. Um, we essentially whitelisted um, embedding your WordPress posts in other WordPress posts, um, which I think will be really interesting to see. You know, instead of having to quote somebody's blog post, you can just embed it at the top. Um, and then we added four new O-embed providers. I think they're uh, Reddit Comments, Reverb Nation, VideoPress, and CloudUp. Uh, integrated responsive images, uh, which is maybe a little more technical. And then there's a new default comments form. So I'm going to pull up my web browser here. <laughs> 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 All right, Let's see if I can do this. I thought it might be kind of fun to go to the WCPX site that I created here and add some content just to try it out. Um, as I mentioned, we added a couple new O-Embed providers, uh, which are pretty, you know, there's some pretty interesting stuff. Nice, I think I activated all the uh, um, I activated all of the uh, feature plugins that are available on .org right now. So we're just going to create, and obviously you all know how, you know, O-Embed stuff works. It's pretty straightforward. Hopefully my internet works in here. But Honestly, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about the new embedding WordPress posts inside of WordPress posts feature. I think it's going to be a lot, it's going to be really cool when we can finally embed things from WordPress.org on our personal blogs. Um, for somebody who works on WordPress.org all day long, that's pretty huge for me because I write a lot of stuff about, doc, uh, about documentation and things that are on WordPress.org. So here I'm pasting a link from this blog, so it's essentially Phil Murrayception here, and I've embedded a WordPress post inside another WordPress post. Cool, huh? Yeah. So the other thing you might have noticed if you had a keen eye was that we actually modified the permalink UI a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. It's right. You see that? There's no more view post button. We just linked it. And it's like this, it's the smallest little thing and it actually takes a little getting used to, but it's really, it really removes a lot of clutter from this screen. Um, let's see what else we have here. Responsive images, which, um, does anybody in here not know what responsive images thing is? So basically the point is, is that um, when you view, uh, let, let's say you have a theme that, that scales images down, right? Because it's responsive. What happens is when you load the page, it loads the image that it needs, which let's say it's like a large size image. And then when you view it on a phone, it actually scales the image down, but it's still the large image, it's just smaller, right? So it still has to load the large, Im large image on a, on a phone. Well, the responsive images stuff that went in with 4.4 essentially loads a smaller image <laughs> uh, based on the smaller device. So it's, it should make sites quite a bit faster. Let's see what else we have here. Um, some of this actually might be what Weston's talking about in the other room right now. A uh, big, a big complaint with the widgets on the in the customizer is that when you loaded it, it would take sort of a little while to load sometimes, and I think he's improved that now to where it's actually fairly instant. Uh, we talked about the new post permalink flow, and a whole bunch of accessibility improvements have been made to the admin in the this last release. Um, so if you're using plugins or themes that target like headings in there, you might want to. There's a post coming on the core development blog about that. Another feature that is sort of something that's been coming for a really long time is trying to keep your menus when you switch themes. 
Um, it's hard because uh, the, menu, uh, the menu locations aren't exactly the same in every theme, but we make a good faith effort to try to move your, your menus from one theme to another without unsetting them. And then there's you know, about 100 other changes that <laughs> went in with WordPress 4.4. Anyway, I thought it might be kind of fun to try out some of the WordPress beta features, embedding WordPress in WordPress and such things like that. And that's all I got. So the question was, how does the image response work, responsiveness work? How does it replace it with a smaller image? I'm pretty sure it's using uh, source set tags and sort of HTML5, some HTML5 stuff to bring in several image sizes for each image element and then loading it dynamically based on the resolution. He's going to have to repeat that. <laughs> the backlog? I think we're below 3,000 tickets now. We closed like 700 tickets that weren't even related to this release, which is pretty sweet. At last check, I think, by the way, that we've closed as fixed almost 800 tickets in this one release. As of now, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, just to give you comparison, in a standard release, like in the last, say, four or five releases, we've closed an average of 600 in the entire release. And we've already closed 800 by beta. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we've been working hard. There's a ton of stuff in there. Yeah, you could, sure. I mean, I built a site on 2016. It's called trywpbeta.com. <laughs> um, anybody else? How often is the new version of the beta release? Uh, the question was, how often does a new beta release uh, come up? It's typically about once a week. It depends on what we run into in the beta. Like, if we got a lot of feedback back, it might be like two weeks. But typically, that's why it stretches out over four to six weeks, because we have a little bit of wiggle room there. But typically, it's, we do a new beta once a week. Anybody else? Thank you very much.